If I were to start learning Blender again in 2026, there are eight painful mistakes I would never, ever make again. These mistakes wasted months of my time, and chances are you're making at least one of them right now. In this video, I'm going to save you months of confusion, burnout, and fake progress by breaking down the exact Blender mistakes beginners keep repeating, and what to do instead if you actually want real skills and real results. By the end of this video, you'll know what not to focus on as a beginner, why most people stay stuck for years, and how to grow faster with less stress. But mistake number six is the one that almost made me quit Blender completely, and I'll explain why in a bit. Most people think they're progressing, but they're actually just getting comfortable being average in Blender. Let's fix that. Mistake number one, try to learn everything at once. YouTube makes it look like you have to do it all. Modeling, sculpting, BFX, animation, game assets. Try to learn everything at once slows you down the most. Blender is a complex tool with tons of features that take time to master and trying to jump into all areas at once leads to overwhelm, frustration, and burnout. This leads to feeling stuck and often quitting or wasting time on bad tutorials or irrelevant details. Rather than building solid muscle memory and understanding, you get a shallow knowledge of many things but don't get good at anything. This is similar to constantly switching tasks and resetting your progress, which kills momentum and creativity. Pick one main focus for your first three to six months either modeling, animation, game assets, motion graphics, then build depth before adding more. Use focused tutorials and small projects that match your current skill level and learning goals. This approach lets your skills build up gradually, with less burnout and more satisfaction as you see real progress. Over time, those small focus steps add up to strong, broad blender skills. In summary, Trying to learn everything at once causes overwhelm, frustration, and frequent quitting due to Blender's complexity. Learning a bit at a time with focused practice helps build muscle memory and solid skills. Start with small projects focused on core skills before moving to advanced features. This gradual approach lets you avoid burnout, stay motivated, and truly enjoy learning Blender without feeling lost in the software's vastness. Mistake number two, watching tutorials without building anything. That's fake progress. You watch 10 tutorials. You feel productive, but you build nothing. What I do instead, for every tutorial, I will pause the video, rebuild it from memory, then change one thing on my own. That's how skills actually stick. Spend most of your time actually working in Blender, ideally at least 75% of your learning session and only about 25% watching tutorials. Watch a tutorial once to understand the concept, then immediately try to do the same thing or something similar on your own without pausing or following every single step. Learn to recall the techniques and apply them in different ways. This helps you retain knowledge better, develop problem-solving skills, and build confidence. Also, Try to challenge yourself with small personal projects that make you explore and practice what you've learned rather than just copying what you see. Getting out of tutorial hell means breaking the habit of only consuming content without creating. Active practice, exploration, and experimentation help you turn what you learn into real skills that stick far longer than just watching videos ever will. Mistake number three, obsessing over perfect renders too early. You're adjusting lights, textures, and camera angles, but your modeling fundamentals are still weak. That's like painting a cracked wall. What I do instead, spend your first months mastering clean topology, proper scale, simple lighting. Cinematic renders can come later. By focusing on progression rather than perfection, you keep momentum and learn faster. Beginners are encouraged to watch tutorials for fundamentals, try replicating what they learn, and then create their own basic scenes without worrying about render quality. As you gain confidence and skill, you can gradually improve your renders by refining lighting, textures, and camera settings. Lighting, for example, is key to a good render, but perfecting it too soon is tricky without understanding the basics of modeling and composition. Many beginners make the mistake of skipping foundational steps to immediately chase amazing renders, which is often discouraging. Instead, 
treat early renders as experiments or rough drafts and accept imperfections while building your 3D knowledge. In short, avoid spending excessive time on perfect renders when learning Blender. Focus on mastering essential skills and completing projects first. Let your renders improve naturally as your understanding deepens, instead of aiming for flawless images right away. That's the smarter path to growth and lasting success in Blender 3D. This approach prevents burnout, keeps learning enjoyable, and helps develop a strong foundation before diving into the complexities of high-quality rendering. Mistake number four, comparing my day 30 to someone's year five. This one destroys motivation quietly. You see insane work online and think, why am I so bad at this? Only compare your month one to your month three, your month six to your month nine. Your only competition is yesterday's you. When you compare your early days in Blender to someone else's years of experience, you're setting an unfair standard. It's like comparing the first steps of a baby to a marathon runner, totally different levels. This comparison can cause frustration and demotivation, making you feel like you're not good enough, which in turn reduces your motivation and slows learning. Focus on your own learning path and growth, no matter how small. Set achievable micro goals for each week or month, like mastering one modeling technique or lighting setup. Celebrate completing tutorials or small projects, even if they seem simple. Learning Blender is about steady, practical application, not speed. Ditch the comparison trap and give yourself grace as you learn. Your day 30 won't look like year five yet, and that's totally okay. You're building your skills one step at a time, which is how pros got where they are today. Mistake number five, ignoring keyboard shortcuts. Clicking everything with a mouse feels easier at first, but it keeps you slow forever. What I do instead, I will learn shortcuts early. G for grab or move, R for rotate, S for scale, tab, toggle between modes, and many more. This builds speed and confidence, and confidence builds consistency. Learning and using shortcuts makes your work feel much smoother and faster since Blender is designed to be controlled heavily by hotkeys. Over time, the shortcuts will become second nature, and your workflow will feel way more fluid and enjoyable. So, ignoring shortcuts is like trying to drive a car with one hand when you could have both hands on the wheel, you're just holding yourself back. Embracing shortcuts speeds up your modeling and animation process and helps your Blender skills grow faster because you're not wasting time on repetitive clicks and navigation. Mistake number six, learning without a clear goal. This is the one that almost made me quit. I was learning Blender, but I had no clear reason why. So motivation kept dropping. When you don't know what you want to create or accomplish, it's like wandering in a huge city without a map. You spend a lot of time and energy, but don't get anywhere meaningful. This messes up your focus because Blender is a complex tool with tons of features, and without a direction, you get overwhelmed trying to learn everything at once. What I do instead, decide early. Don't want a job, freelancing, YouTube, game dev, asset selling. When Blender is tied to a goal, quitting becomes harder. Not having a goal slows down your progress because you're likely to bounce around different tutorials or features without applying what you learn. This scattered learning means you don't build deep skills or finish projects, and that lack of completion kills momentum. It's better to pick a narrow focus, like modeling or texturing, and repeatedly work on small projects around that skill, making mistakes and improving as you go. This focused approach helps build confidence and practical experience faster than trying to learn everything randomly or just for fun with no direction. What you should do instead is think of Blender as a tool you want to use to create something specific. For example, if you like video games, set a goal to make a game asset like a simple weapon or a piece of terrain. If you want to get better at animation, set a goal to create a short animation of a bouncing ball. Once you have a goal, Break it down into smaller tasks. Complete those step by step and celebrate finishing projects even if they're rough. This keeps things fun, builds skills, and stops you from feeling stuck or frustrated. So, the major takeaway is defining a clear goal gives you motivation, focus, and a sense of progress in Blender. It stops you from getting overwhelmed or discouraged, 
And it actually speeds up your learning journey because you practice what's relevant instead of wandering aimlessly through tutorials and features. Mistake number seven, avoiding ugly practice. Beginners hide their bad work. They never post, never share, never get feedback, and they stay stuck. Post your bad work. Let people correct you. That's how you grow exponentially faster. Mistake number eight, waiting too long to build a portfolio. Many beginners wait until they feel ready. Truth is, you're never fully ready. Start your portfolio as early as month three. Simple props, small scenes, mini animations. A weak portfolio is better than no portfolio. Here's the truth I wish someone told me earlier. You don't fail in Blender because you're not talented. You fail because you repeat the same beginner mistake for too long. Avoid these eight mistakes, and your first year in Blender will look completely different. Now the real question is, if you avoided these mistakes completely, how fast could you actually grow in 12 months? Because the timeline most beginners believe is completely wrong. If this video saved you from even one Blender mistake, subscribe right now because this channel is all about learning 3D the smart way without wasting years. And if you'd like me to drop a step-by-step 12-month -step Blender roadmap, comment roadmap below and I'll make it for you.